you know when you're working and you feel like your project is about to just pop off? So you're like, somebody has to bear witness to this. What's up, it's Key. Welcome or welcome back. First of all, <laughs> this energy, side note, this energy is so far removed from yesterday. Yesterday, first of all, I got back in the bed. And secondly, <laughs> I laid on this floor for like two, three minutes and just stared at the ceiling to the point where I got dramatic and I was just like, let's just change my profession. Like, I'm not a fashion designer anymore. I don't want to do it. No motivation. Never going to have the motivation ever again. But I got this sketched out. I got the pieces cut out yesterday while I was feeling the way I was feeling. And I was just like... Ooh, I'm feeling it again. So um, I just wanted to like show you the process. I know I'm not the best at describing what I'm doing, but I'm gonna do my best for this one. It's another client piece. And I'm thinking I'm gonna make one for myself, honestly, because I'm just like, ooh. So let's get it popping. So now that all of the pieces are cut out, I laid everything out and I'm just gonna use this one as an example. But the first thing I wanna do to make this puffer jacket a puffer jacket is to create a casing or a few different casings between the lining and the self fabric. And to do that, I'm just gonna sew little channels along like parallel so that I can be able to stuff the cotton batting inside. And to do that, I'm gonna use the most helpful tool in the world, my L school ruler and just a tailor's chalk. So I just need to figure out how many channels I want and basically how puffy I want it to be. Um, I bought three bags of the cotton batting, so we'll see. All right, now that everything is pinned together, all stabilized, I'm going to flip it over. Cause like I said, I want to make sure that everything looks crispy. So I'm gonna sew in these lines. Um, what I want to do is see how many casings I actually want. And I think that I want three. I'm not too sure. So the length of this is about 30, 30 and a half inches long. So let's do some math. So if I want three sections, obviously I'm going to need about 10 inches. And that is a little awkward, so we're gonna do 10 in a bit. <laughs> um, yeah, let's start here. And maybe I don't even need my L square ruler because I'm just going to sew in this line. So I guess this is gonna be approximations. I don't want this entire top half to be I'm sorry, I'm just like thinking out loud, but what I'm gonna do is sew around the perimeter up until I get to here. I'm not gonna sew the center front, and then that's how I'm going to stuff the casing. But now I'm just wondering, do I want this entire section to be puff? This comes almost to 10 inches, so I'm just gonna do that at this line. Yeah, so it'll be broken into three segments. It's just gonna be like a really big wide puff area of puffiness, but I guess I just won't fill it with batting as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew the casings here and here. And then I will come back and let you know what's going on. But like I said, I'm going to sew around this perimeter until I get to the center front. And then that's how I'm going to stuff it. And then I'll close it up, obviously. So I just finished sewing the one seam that you just saw. And it took so, so, so long. Time lapse makes everything look so much easier. But I just wanted to make sure everything stayed as straight, like pin needle straight. Um, so now we have seven more seams to go. Okay, so I just finished sewing all of the channels on each piece. And the last thing I did was these sleeves. Just imagine, it's winter. You feel a little chill, it's cold outside, and you slip your arm into this satin. Oh, 
I just realized this video is just gonna be of me like squealing about this jacket for 10 minutes but um next step is to fill all of the pieces so that's what we're gonna do right now and then just put everything together the sleeves now done they are both closed up on both seams and now onto the rest so because the area of the back is so wide i did have to open another polyfill bag and i forgot to mention that i also attached my label before I sewed everything together just so I don't have to like fight to get back inside and so that there's no seam out here. It's very clean. I attached it on the lining before I got started. Okay, I know that on camera at this point it probably just looks like a big pillow, but I'm going to go ahead and attach everything at the side seams and the shoulders um, and then we'll have like a big puffer vest and then I'm going to go ahead and attach the sleeves okay last time i'm gonna update you for real for real it's five o'clock i'm exhausted it took every muscle in my body to get that machine or this i can't even speak this jacket through the machine i have one half right now and i'm like this is the point where you have to trust the process because I'm like, this is either going to look really amazing and expensive or like really crazy. But um, I'm sweating. I'm literally sweating, like pulling this fabric through the machine. But here it is, half on half, and we're going to get it finished tomorrow. Okay, it is now many moons later. I started this project around the holiday time, so I took some time off in December. It is now the first week in January, so Happy New Year. And the only thing that I did since then was attach the cuff. I still need to hand sew it on the inside. And then just now I sewed the facing. It's not really a facing, but I just kind of closed this off. And then I have some buttons to attach. My iron just died and I was like, okay very unprofessional of you but i'm going to try to hand steam it and try to get a good press on this before i attach the buttons um i love attaching hardware because you get to use a hammer and take out some of your frustrations and i personally need to do that right now Okay, so welcome to my floor and welcome to the button installment portion of this video. So I used my awl to poke a hole through this fabric. It's a very thick fabric already and it's double layered. And um, the post of this button is just very short. I don't know if you can see, but this tiny post needs to get through both layers of this very thick fabric. So I had to use my awl to like poke a hole, round it out, and then like get some of the excess fabric out of the way with my snips. Um, but it's okay. We finessed it. You know, we got it in the end. You're gonna see my upper body strength right now. So I also used ugh, this 25 pound weight <laughs> um, as an anvil so that I can get these buttons in. As I said earlier this week on the first freaking week of January, I had a situation that made me kind of sad. Um, and I was trying to be mature about it. I was trying to be like very Zen, mellow Buddhist about it. Like I'm fine, you're fine, we're fine. Everything's gonna be fine type vibes. But then I woke up yesterday angry, like I did as got out of my bed mad about the situation. So today I have a hammer and we're going to use that emotion to get my buttons in, right? So let's get it popping. <laughs> I'm 
imagine if I broke a nail trying to do this? Okay, so I just finished putting in these buttons. Like I said, I am still pretty disappointed that they're not more gold, they're more silvery. But um, I realized far too late that I did not count how many buttons I had compared to like my markings. They lined up perfectly. Like I used as many buttons as I marked in um, without counting them. So that was like by the grace of God. But um, yeah, so. All I have now left to do is put in the pockets, put in the collar, the bottom facing, and then I have some like hand sewing to do, like I showed you the the cuff, um, and then we'll be done.